Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing great. Uh, first of all, massive apologies from my side. Usually I'm very punctual when it comes to even the live classes. And really sorry, I was badly stuck in a situation. And as a result of that, I got late, late and late. Anyways, a better late than never. Uh, first of all, I would like to have some confirmation. Am I absolutely crystal clear, specifically with respect to voice quality? Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you for the confirmation. Lovely. Okay, so before we move on and before we start something more constructive, it's time for, you know, a couple of quick reminders. First of all, uh, well, my name is Ahmed and this is my number which ends with 065. So if you've got any concerns or queries regarding AAA, or anything uh, in relation to ACCA in general, well, you're more than welcome to contact me through the WhatsApp. Second number, which ends with seven, that belongs to the WIFI's admission department. And if you want to enroll for any course, let it be AAA or any other course or any other uh, valuable information in relation to the course or the enrollment or the December or for the March 2024, well, this is the number you need to contact on. Okay, and today is 18th November, so we have got 12 days of November followed by 3 days of December because on 4th December 2023, either you are going to attempt the paper or you are going to secure the exam. Yes, there are two types of students, A, who are just going to attempt the paper. Yes, they can pass as well and they will pass, but the second category of the student is the one where the where the students are going to secure the paper. Now, who can secure the AAA paper? Well, anyone, anyone can secure the AAA paper provided you are going to invest the next 15, 14 days in the, when, you know, with the right plan and with the right direction and with the right energy. And you've got to be, you've got to stay optimistic and motivated. You've got to have the self-belief that you can still pull it off in the next 12 to 14 days, it's very much possible. If your preparation stands somewhere around at 50%, with the right energy and dedication, you will make it. Mind you, you are not supposed to score 100 marks. You are supposed to give your 100%. I'm supposed to give my 100%. But at the end of the day, all we need is to score 50 marks. And it is possible. So what about the course content? Well, we've got syllabus area A, which is about regulatory environment. We are not going to discuss that today. We have got another syllabus area B, which is about professional and ethical consideration. And yes, we will discuss that. Then we've got syllabus area C, quality management, which is a hot cake for the last year or so. Then we have got syllabus area D and E, which is the most well-prepared topic by the students around the globe. Because everyone knows the question number one will focus on the syllabus area D, and everyone knows that completion, review, and reporting will have one exclusive question in the section D. So if you ask me, well, the most well-prepared topic among the entire syllabus around the globe is syllabus area D and E. Syllabus area F, the audit, the other assignments or the audit-related services, this is the most painful area because greater majority of the students will not be well-prepared for that. By the time they are approaching the other assignments, the exam is around the corner. So somebody will give them an advice that, okay, go on and prepare D and E because that's more sure and that's more certain. Well, that's not a great strategy. So if you ask me, I would say, give me a guarantee in relation to three topics. B, C, F. B is professional and ethical issues. C is quality management. F is other assignments. If you can give me guarantee of BCF, well, to be very honest, I can give you an assurance, obviously a reasonable one, not, a, not an absolute one, that you will pass the paper. If you are going to divide 200 students into two categories, assume 100 students who passed the paper, 100 students who didn't, you know, qualify the paper. Those who passed the paper were very well prepared for B, C, F. And obviously they were prepared for D, N, E. And those who failed the paper, well, out of 100, 
eighty percent were well prepared for DT, but they were not prepared for B, C, and F. And as a result of that, as a result of that, they will not be able to make it. Okay. Fortunately, I've been part of the ACCA's official practice to pass triple A webinars as well, and with the uh, you know loads and loads of webinars. Every time in the webinar, I've tried to cover syllabus area D followed by syllabus area E, syllabus area D followed by syllabus area E. Yes, maybe some of you might be interested in the syllabus area D and E right now as we speak, but I'm with a very different plan. My plan is, okay, before I reveal my plan, let me justify my plan. So the question number one will always be set at the planning stage. Question number one will always be set at the planning stage for 50 marks. Question number two and three, which has got total 25 marks each, one of the questions will be focused on completion, review, and reporting. Now, what about the other question? What about the third question? Well, the third question in the syllabus, in the section B, it is usually a combination of Syllabus area B ethics and other assignment syllabus area F. It could be a combination of syllabus area C quality management along with other assignments F. It could be a combination of A, maybe something to do with money laundering along with syllabus area F. It could be a combination of other assignments along with current issues that is F and G. So what I want you to realize that Within the syllabus A, within the section B, one of the questions will have a flavor of either B and F or C and F. Yes, it could be F and G, but most likely B and F or C and F. What about question number one? Yes, we all know question number one ha will have syllabus area D, the business risk or the audit risk or the risk of material misstatement. But within the section A, there is a huge possibility that you will be tested for the syllabus area B ethics as well. So if we are going to get 10 marks on ethics within the section A, followed by another 25 marks of, uh, within the section D, uh, which is going to be a combination of other assignments and ethics, or it could be a quality review. So more or less, if you are well prepared for B, C, and F, almost 50 marks are in your pocket or at least at least at least at least 35 to 40 marks are uh 40 marks are secured okay so yeah okay uh in the chat box uh yeah peter i have to attend a function after this one after this session uh naman i hope my voice is clear now and any smart strategy for the remaining day? Yes, I will share a smart strategy. Probably I'll share the smart strategy tomorrow. Okay, guys, before we move on to the today's topic, you know what? What is the global pass rate for AAA? 32, 34%. Unlike SBR and SBL, which are high above, well, they are touching 50, 51%. Even AFM is 47, 45%. Then why triple A with 32, 34%? Well, 32, 32, 34, 34. For the last three attempts, yeah, it's pretty consistent at 34%. But there is a huge gap of 50% versus 34%. Why the failure rate is so high? Well, the failure rate is so high because majority of the students will not be able to finish the exam. Well, why majority of the students will not be able to finish the exam? Maybe because of the poor typing speed maybe because of the lack of awareness of the ACCS practice platform. So a smart approach is at least type 100 marks, at least type 100 marks on a daily basis. At least type 100 marks on a daily basis in the last 10 days. And that too using the ACCS practice platform. Try to understand the marking scheme. Do not idealize the ideal answers. Those ideal answers are for your knowledge and for your guidance. You cannot and you should not replicate all of that. Do not ignore syllabus area B and F. Those who were enrolled from the day one, if you're watching it live or as a recorded content, you know what I've been emphasizing throughout the session. Everyone, including we, are well prepared for D and E. It's about B and F or C and F 
which is going to create a difference. Yes, you've got to attempt at least three mock exams. At Witty, the, the AAA mock exam is on 24th November. Yeah, that's the date for the AAA mock exam. You've got to prepare your own IAS and IFRS notes. Well, I hope I've already shared the IAS and IFRS notes in the WhatsApp group, either the paid group or the free WhatsApp group. Make sure your exam, your mock exam is marked by any expert tutor. So yeah, at VP, uh, your, your mock exam is on 24th. So on 24th and on 25th and 26th, uh, I'll be marking the mock exams. Okay, sir, the file you send in the group, we need to type or just read. Well, you've got to type. Obviously, you've got to prepare those. Those are for your understanding. And much more. Okay. So can you share the WhatsApp group link? Yes, I can share. Well, there are two WhatsApp groups. The first one is, I believe, full. So I will share the link of the... Well, the first one is almost full. It has a couple of slots. Anyways, the second one is not that full. But I give equal importance to all the WhatsApp groups. Trust me on that. Okay, give me a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute. Okay, I've shared the link of the WhatsApp group uh, in the chat box. The first group is, I guess, full. The second group does have a lot of members, but it's not full. So, suit yourself. Okay, so this is it. Yes. Uh, now what? Now, considering the fact that... We are, a majority of the students are already well prepared for D and E. What is the major reason behind the failure? The major reason is many students are not well prepared for the other assignments. Now, what about other assignments? Okay. Other assignment based question. For example, this is the question which is not available in the WIPI portal. I gave this question as an assignment one week ago to my regular student. The name of the question is Jensen. Let me show you where is Jensen. So this is the topic, right? Other assignments. What about other assignments? Guys, this session is more geared towards guiding you rather than teaching. I've conducted so many webinars, but I've just realized that when 15 days are around the corner, a student needs more of a direction rather than, you know, this is the topic, this is the definition. Now, in your AAA exam kit, broadly speaking, there are three sections. The first section has got to do with the section A question, the 50 mark question, Mercurio, Wenberry, we did fail, we did Grubber, we did Rider, we did Red Back Sport. So these questions are the 50 mark questions. Then we have got completion, review, and reporting based questions. So the last area, the last area is other assignments along with professional, ethical consideration, and quality management related questions. Okay. Now, if you want to pass the paper, you've got to focus on other assignment based questions for the four to five days. Now, these questions, which are relevant to other assignments, if you want to nail these questions, which are focused on other assignments, there are a couple of prerequisites. Prerequisite number one, you've got to prepare ethics and quality management first. If you are well prepared for ethics and quality management, including the past paper question practice, automatically, you will love all these questions which are called the questions are based on other assignments. You will love Jensen. You will love Morit. You will love Sita. You will love Baltimore. You will love Woodward Hospital, Newman, and whatnot. The second prerequisite is if you want to enjoy other assignments and if you want to enjoy the overall syllabus area, this is this ethics is B, this quality management is C. And the other assignment is F. So I want you to go into the exam with P, C, F as your strength. 
Trust me, DNE is not a problem. Everyone around the globe prepares DNE. There are loads and loads of questions on DNE. The problem is B, C, and F. Okay, I've already shared a very important file in relation to the syllabus area B within the WhatsApp groups. I will be sharing a file on the quality management probably tonight or tomorrow. And I will share another file on the syllabus area F as well. Now, what about syllabus area F? Almost every question and every other assignment starts with the same thing. What factors you need to consider before accepting an assignment? For example, if you are accepting an assignment on maybe it's a forensic audit assignment, what factors you need to consider before accepting such an assignment? So what about other assignments? Let's explore other assignments a bit. Well, we have got six other assignments or six topics which are audit related services. And most likely in your exam, one of the questions in the section B will be focused on other assignments. But not the full question because half marks would be either on quality management or ethical issues. That's a typical pattern. I'll show you the part of a question as well. Now, what topics we have? Well, we have got the first other assignment based topic, which is called a review of interim financial information. Interim financial information, review of interim financial information is the least examinable topic among the six topics we have. Why? Because it's pretty much a simplified version of audit. What do we mean by review of interim financial information audit? Uh, review of interim financial information. When I say review of interim financial information, it means not even half the audit. In many countries, the companies are either voluntarily or obliged, you know, because of the laws and regulations, that they need to publish their half yearly interim report. And obviously, they, that will have summarized statement of profit and loss, maybe certain aspects of the financial position as well. And a company may choose or may be required by law to have a review on this. So what is going to be the objective of the engagement? If, if, if the examiner asks you, well, it's a bookish knowledge thing. If the examiner asks you, what is the objective of an engagement in relation to the review of interim financial information? Well, the objective is that we as an auditor would express a conclusion whether the interim financial information is appropriate or not. Is it prepared in, a, in, in, in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework? That's it. Okay, what about the acceptance consideration? I'm saying that this is a topic, this is a question which is very much examinable. What factors you need to consider before considering the acceptance of a review of financial information? Well, first of all, you have to understand that the external auditor is likely to have the greatest understanding of the company. And in order to perform review of interim financial information, you need good understanding of the company. So it's the external auditor who is in the best position with respect to understanding of the company. But at the same time, you have to realize that it is most likely going to be a recurring engagement. So if it is going to be a recurring engagement, that could create self-interested. That could lead to a situation where fee dependency could be could be at stake. So for each and every topic, there are acceptance considerations. You need to evaluate whether you have got the resources available to perform the review of entire financial information. Competence is obviously not a question mark over here because assuming you are the external auditor of the company, I, I think I'm sure you can and you will be able to handle the review of interim financial information. So it's about the availability of resources. It's about managing the ethical issues. Again, integrity of the client is not a question mark here. Why? Because you are already the external auditor of, the, of that company. So obviously you have already evaluated the integrity of the client. When it comes to procedures, the examiner could ask you what procedures you are going to perform if you are engaged in a review of interim financial information? Well, your procedures would be mostly analytical procedures and inquiries. So you, you, you need to compare the interim financial information with the prior year interim financial information. You need to compare the 
interim financial information with the budgeted results, with the forecasted results. If a certain period have lapsed, you might want to compare. Well, you know, you need to calculate certain ratios and make sure there is a consistency. If there is anything which is unusual, obviously you need to further investigate it. You need to have discussion with the management. You need to make sure that the accounting policies are consistently applied. You need to inquire with the management whether there was any significant control deficiency during the year, because that will create a doubt over the reliability of the figure. You need to inquire with the management if there was any significant change that has happened during the year, maybe that will increase your understanding of the entity. So this is the first topic, which is about the review of interim financial information. Now, if somebody wants to prepare this topic, technique number one, prepare this topic using the book, using the study text, and then go on to a past paper question. And the past paper question, which is... Uh, about the review of financial interim financial information, it's called Gannett Company. So over here, this is Gannett Company. You need to prepare Gannett, and considering we covered Gannett during the session, if you have, if you have already prepared Gannett, obviously two thumbs up. You can quickly revise that. Okay, the second topic, which is a very important topic, it 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 might be tested in the upcoming attempt and it's called due diligence. Now, what about due diligence? Well, due diligence is an activity which is performed by the experts in order to figure it out whether the investment is a worth, you know, whether it is a worth investing investment or not. So, for example, company A wants to buy company B. So I will call company A acquirer and company B is the target company. Company A wants to buy company B. Now company A is the acquirer, company B is the target company. Okay. What happens next? The company A's top management might not have the skills, resources, time, competence, and prior experience to figure it out whether the investment, whether the target company B is worth investing or not. So company A's management will contact some expert, most likely their external auditor, and they will ask them to perform a fact-finding exercise and make them realize whether that investment is a poor investment decision or a good investment decision. That activity is called due diligence assignment. Why are they conducting a due diligence assignment? Why they are involving the external auditor for the due diligence? Because they want to know certain things about the target company. For example, they want to know the financial performance and position of the target company, that is company B. They want to know the operational matters of the target company, that, that is company B. They want to know the market position, the commercial matters. They want to know the, what's the legal matters. What about the employees, the HR matters? What about the HMR, the tax matters? So the company A, the acquirer just want to know whether this is the right company to go ahead with, whether this is the right time to go ahead with, whether this is the right amount to go ahead with. All that information will help the company A acquirer to come up with a well-informed decision. The company A will be making a decision with open eyes. They will know for sure what assets and what liabilities they are going to get out of it. This due diligence assignment could be conducted as an assurance assignment where limited assurance would be expressed and it could be an agreed upon procedure, which is also known as fact-finding exercise, where no conclusion or no assurance will be given. Rather, I will just answer the queries and the questions which you are going to raise. So due diligence could be either an assurance assignment or it could be an agreed upon procedure or agreed upon procedure assignment. What is the benefit of engaging an advisor to carry out the due diligence? Why company A would hire me? Well, company A will hire me. Minu, you don't have to copy this. I will share it in the WhatsApp group. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. 
So what is the benefit of engaging the advisor to carry out this due diligence? Why this, why why the company would hire me? Assuming I'm their external auditor, or maybe if I'm not their external auditor, why they would hire me? Well, maybe because of the fact that the management does not have the time to carry out the due diligence by themselves. Maybe management might not be, you know, they might not have the competence to do the job. So what are the benefits of engaging an advisor? If they are going to engage me, what benefit they are going to get? Well, first of all, considering the fact I am independent, the credibility of the, you know, of, of that decision will be boosted because of the due diligence support. They will be able to understand what assets and what liabilities they will they are going to get. And the management does not have to spend so much time uh, on gathering that information. Will the assurance report on the due diligence be positive or negative? Positively worded opinion is provided with respect to the audit of financial statement. This is not an audit of financial statement. So if it is going to be an assurance engagement, it has to be a negatively worded or limited assurance assignment, limited assurance assignment, or a fact-finding exercise where no assurance is given. Okay, as I've asked all of you to prepare almost seven different files, those who are already part of the paid WhatsApp groups, they know what I'm saying. Those who are not part of the WhatsApp group or they're not part of any group whatsoever. Well, over this session, we have tried to create a few files. The first file which we created was on ethics. What does that file mean? It's a file which has got realistic answers, not ideal answers. And that file will have almost 10 to 12 past paper answers, all relevant to ethics. Then we created the file number two, which is about all the procedures. Then we created a file number three, which is about all the evidence from the mayor approach from the syllabus area E. The fourth file is how to criticize a draft audit report, criticism on draft audit report. That's the fourth file. Fifth file, what impact it will have on the audit report if the issue remains unresolved. That's the fifth file. Sixth file, quality management. Seventh. And as of now, the last file, maybe I'll create an eighth file for the businesses, maybe. But as of now, the seventh and the last file is what matters you need to consider before accepting an engagement, whether it's an audit engagement, whether it's a review of interim financial information, whether it's a due diligence, whether it's a forensic audit, whether it is this or that. That's a very, very, very important file. So what factors you need to consider before accepting a due diligence assignment? Okay, so read the first sentence. As with any assignment, whether it's a forensic audit, whether it's a review of entire financial information, whether it's a review of prospective financial information, the practitioner must only take on the work of an acceptable level of risk. That's a, that's a basic formula or the basic principle. But along with that, or in addition to that, the company or, or the practitioner must consider the following. For example, for example, I want to know why they are not engaging their existing auditor. Because the existing auditor is in the best position to understand the potential synergy. He or she or the, be, or the firm is in the best position to understand what benefits would be, you know, what benefits could be drive if there is an acquisition? So I need to evaluate why they are not engaging their existing firm of accountants. Secondly, I need to know whether that target company's employees know about the acquisition. Is it a hostile takeover? Because that might create problems for me. I might not be able to gather the desired information and the evidence which I'm looking for. I want to know the exact scope of the due diligence. Why they want to buy the company? What do I mean by exact scope of the due diligence? The reason for the acquisition. Are they interested in the plant? Are they interested in the premises? Are they interested in the human resource? Are they interested in, in the patent? What for? The deadline for the report. Because if the deadline is too tight, I might not be able to you know execute the assignment. And as a result of that, I might not be willing to engage myself in such an assignment. Yes, 
there are many ethical issues which are created when you are going to engage yourself in any other assignment so if you are the external auditor of company a and company a has asked you to perform due diligence uh, with respect to company b there is a possibility that might create loads and loads of ethical issues so these are the typical points which you need to keep in your mind when you are accepting a due diligence assignment what procedures you have to apply well considering the fact you are you are you have to apply procedures on company b now because the target company is company b you have to apply analytical procedures on the financial statements of the company b in order to assess the performance of the of the company b or the target company you got to review their forecast make sure the assumptions are appropriate review their existing contracts in order to understand what would happen when the ownership would change try to understand if there are related party transactions because related party transaction is a very convenient and a very famous and a very common way to manipulate the financial statement try to understand about the useful life of their non current assets what if they are they are about to be you know you know they need to be written off they are obsolete you got to review the board minutes of the target company maybe they are concerned about a certain issue which could affect the value of the company you got to review the correspondence between the target company and the third party such as major customer major supplier tax authorities with why because what if there are certain disputes going on and that might put off the company a they won't be able to buy it or they don't want to buy it so these are the procedures which you need to apply for a due diligence assignment now the examiner could ask you what factors could be important when you are applying a due diligence or when you are performing a due diligence assignment okay think like company a what would affect your decision what will make you realize you don't have to buy this company what would make you realize you have to buy this company what would make you realize you don't have to buy the company on the on the set price on the given price what would make you realize that you should not buy it right now let's give a break let's take some time let's wait if there is a pending legal action well that's an important factor for company a the acquirer if there is an outstanding tax investigation that could be an important factor for the company a the acquirer if the market is going down maybe i will not be able to or i might not want to buy the company maybe i want to buy the company but later on maybe i want to buy the company but at a reduced price if there is a you know decline in the financial performance i might not want to buy the company if the assets need replacement immediately after the acquisition i i might buy the company but not at the agreed price or not at the price which is you know which is on the table right now so these are the factors which we need to consider when we are applying or you know applying a due diligence Uh, we are when we are in the middle of a due diligence assignment so now what about the past paper questions which past paper questions are absolutely mandatory in relation to due diligence so in this session i believe we did a chita which is a beautiful question on due diligence but at least one more question and that one more question should be balti more these two questions are very important for the okay now i'm back to the chat box so mera is also question sir you refer to the mayor approach can you please tell what this what is this okay collapse has beautifully answered that question mayor approach is a is a methodology to answer the question when the examiner is going to ask a question from the syllabus area e that is completion review and reporting the examiner will ask you what factors you need to consider or what matters you need to consider and what evidence what matters you need to consider in order to reach the conclusion what matters you need to consider in order to reach the conclusion so realize the audit is nearly nearing completion you are done with the procedure what matters you need to consider in order to reach the conclusion and what evidence you expect to find in the audit file so already the audit has 
been executed already the evidence have been collected all the evidence in the are in the audit file now what evidence you expect to be in the audit file so the in order to answer that question you need to focus on four things a uh, well mere approach m for you need to have a discussion about the materiality after having a discussion what's going on then you need to discuss the accounting standard or the accounting issue then you need to discuss the risk that there is a risk that the correct accounting treatment has not been followed or maybe the correct or maybe there is a categorically incorrect accounting treatment so you have to say this is not correct maybe the accounting treatment is partly correct so where the accounting treatment is correct appreciate that last but not the least what evidence you expect to be in the audit file what evidence evidence is something which is a shorter version of procedure a procedure has got three things but a evidence has got two things mere approach is relevant to the 50 mark question is there anyone who would like to answer this question in the chat box thank you ajinda no why not because this mere approach question is from the syllabus area e syllabus area e so if you want to practice questions on mere go for matty go for goodman i think lightson ozier nine francis adder all of them have got mere approach in it okay thank you zain if material misstatement exists which is not resolved by the client in limited assurance what opinion will be given in this situation yeah qualified except for that we didn't find anything which is which makes us believe that the statements are not correct qualified will there be any limitation on scope placed by target company in due diligence and would it be considered yes we you need to consider whether the employees know or or are they willing to cooperate this is this is an important factor r stands for risk e stands for evidence risk of material misstatement and evidence guys okay let's open my most important url so what about the triple a technical article so those who want to prepare evidence you simply have to click on the syllabus area e completion review and reporting now in the completion review and reporting the last three technical articles are very very important at wiki we covered these three technical articles this technical article is on going concern now if you want to prepare a question on going concern i'm just telling you one question at the moment dali 27 but obviously you are not going to rely on one question but at least one dali okay the second technical article is auditors report to those charged with governance now if you want to nail once you have prepared this technical article i think the question in relation to this technical article was i think it was kill mr if somebody could help me out in this last but surely not the least what about the third technical article examining evidence this is the most important technical article thank you jacob thank you what about this technical article yeah peter you are absolutely right because it 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 kind of kind of just creates a distraction for me as well because when i see chat box has got 1 2 3 so my mind you know i i i just i just become so curious to check it check it out what happened in the chat box is it something really important am i missing something and then i i just go on to the chat box and that breaks my flow so so the request is from peter and from me and from jacob as well that let's let's use the chat box once there is a very important or very you know urgent kind of a work otherwise let's not use the chat box and you are more than welcome to raise your question note it down somewhere i will answer your questions don't worry okay what about examining evidence this is a very 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 important technical article and this technical article will teach you that a procedure has got three things 
where as an evidence has got two th two things so a procedure will have an action a procedure will have an action followed by a procedure will have an action followed by uh, an evidence and why why were you doing it so a procedure source of evidence and why were you doing it but when it comes to evidence when it comes to evidence the procedure has already been performed so within the audit file you will be looking at the evidence and the reason why you think that evidence was there so this is a very very important technical article and trust me this technical article deserves to be read at least four to five times it it, it just takes about 15 to 20 minutes or half an hour but you need to read this technical article, then solve a couple of questions on mere approach, then read the technical article all over again, then read then attempt another couple of questions on the mere approach. And that is why you will be more prepared with respect to this topic. Okay, I will share a file in the WhatsApp group uh, at the end of the session, not today, probably tomorrow. And I will share the name of the technical articles which are most important along with the past paper question which you need to prepare along with that. How does that sound? Instead of highlighting the past paper questions along with the technical articles, what if I create a file having 15 most important technical articles? 15 most important technical articles along with the past paper questions. Is this clear? Is it correct? Yes, that would be perfect. I, I think that would be great, yes. Okay, so what about the third assignment? The third assignment, which is hated all over the world, which is the most underprepared other assignment among the other assignments we have, it's called forensic audit. Now, why forensic audit is underprepared? A forensic audit is a specialized branch of audit. It has got all the traditional auditing techniques, analytical procedures, recalculation, substantive procedures, but you have to incorporate inquiries and you need to have very strong communication skills in order to execute a forensic audit assignment. Now, you have once you will be part of the forensic assignment or as a forensic accountant, you have to communicate your findings in the form of report, exhibits, and collection of documents. So with respect to forensic audit, the report at the end of the assignment is very important and very different. You need to know what are the differential attributes of a forensic audit report. Moreover, why this topic is different? Because you might have to assist in legal proceedings as well. You might have to you know, come up with the testimony and you have to testify in court as an expert witness. You might have to prepare your visual in order to support the trial evidence. So this, this is something very difficult. And when you are performing a forensic investigation, a forensic audit, your ethical principles are highly questionable because you probably are involved in a world where there is a crime, where there was a crime, and you are involved with criminals, directly or indirectly. So this is something very tricky. So I already mentioned, I will share a file which is called acceptance consideration, or what factors we need to consider before accepting an assignment. So as with any assignment, the practitioner must take on work of an acceptable level of risk. Yes, we all know that. Most importantly for forensic audit, the practitioner must ensure that they can comply with the fundamental ethical principles. Because this is something which requires a highest level of competence and due care. You need to learn how to secure the evidence. You need to make sure you, you can take great care of the evidence itself. So professional competence and due care is, is a very important phenomenon when it comes to this assignment. You need to maintain confidentiality. But at the same time, if you're going to figure it out that a criminal activity needs to be, to be reported to a third party, for example, anti-money laundering or anti-terrorism-based organization, 
a certain, you know, uh, to the government, you need to report it in the best interest of the public. You need to maintain objectivity because they will offer you something. They will make an offer. You might not be able to resist. Your integrity is highly questionable when it comes to such an assignment. You need to maintain your professional behavior. And consider the fact that you might have to present yourself in front of the court. So advocacy threat and self-review threat are at stake as well. So these are the acceptance considerations which are very important for an assignment such as this one, the one based on the forensic audit. Okay, what kind of assurance? Well, the news is there is no assurance when it comes to forensic audit. It is an agreed upon assignment, agreed upon procedures and agreed upon assignment. Okay, what kind of procedures do you need to apply? Well, you will inquire, you will take interviews of the key staff, you will look into the documents, you will look into the you know, CCTV camera footage, you need to apply analytical procedures, you need to apply software in order to figure it out if there is any unusual movement in the data. Okay, you need to understand what is the objective of the investigation. Are you going to be part of the court proceedings as well? You need to understand, uh, uh, you need to consider whether you have got the resources and skills. Will you be able to manage the deadline? You need to confirm whether the firm will be required to act as an expert witness or not. Maybe you are not willing to do that. In that case, you are not going to execute that assignment. Well, at AAA level, the examiner is going to come up with two types of assignments. Either it's going to be an insurance claim or it is going to be a fraudulent, a fraud investigation. A fraud investigation could be in the form of fraudulent financial reporting, maybe a payroll related fraud, you know, fictitious employees or ghost employees. So this is uh, forensic audit and you need to apply certain procedures. For example, you need to inspect the payment for the evidence of authorization. If there was no authorization, in that case, there is a possibility that there are ghost payments. You need to use the softwares in order to trace the payments. You need to look for the bank statement and cash they book. You need to inspect the reports in relation to the changes of standing data. You need to apply analytical procedures where you might be able to identify that there is an unusual increase or decrease in the Trends or in the numbers, you need to interview the suspect. You might you need to have good communication skills so that you could inspect the suspect. You need to inspect the supporting documentation, for example, the contracts of the employment in order to figure it out whether they, whether that employee is a ghost employee or not. You need to inspect the company's insurance policy in order to figure it out whether the whether that fraud or whether that event which happened is covered by the insurance policy or not. Now, with respect to this topic, which is called forensic audit, there are two questions which we did in this session. And the two questions are 55 and 56, retriever and beer. Okay, guys, when I started today's session, do you remember? What did I say? I said, we, you, you need to prepare F other assignments. But if you want to enjoy other assignments, and C, quality management has to be strong. Now, if these two areas are strong, if these two areas are strong, automatically, automatically, you will start loving the syllabus area F. Let me demonstrate all that with an example. So this is a question, part A. Using the information in exhibit one only, evaluate the quality management, ethical and professional matters. So what about this? This is syllabus area B and this is syllabus area C. 14 marks, apparently, Apparently, this is a question on other assignment, and I have referred this question as a question on the forensic auditing. But guess what? If your B and C is strong, automatically you will love the entire question. Now, what about the part B? Using the information in exhibit two, recommend the procedures to be performed in determining the amount of the insurance claim. So 
everyone will focus on exhibit 2 which is about forensic county but please realize that there is a lot to be prepared within the exhibit 1 and out of the part a so the part a has got a blend of ethics and quality management according to the audit junior the audit was quite time pressured so if the audit was quite time pressured, there is a huge possibility that the corners would have been cut. You know, the plan would have been deviated. Unnecessarily, things would have been curtailed just to make sure we don't so end up... sharing the screen. Really sorry. Is it, is it okay now? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so this is a question called Retriever. And it's a famous question... And it is famous because of the fact that this is a question on the syllabus area F forensic audit. But please realize what I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to highlight the importance of the syllabus area C and B, ethics and quality management. So the exhibit number one has got 14 marks. So if I am going to attempt the paper on 4th December 2023 and my syllabus area B and C, ethics and quality management are not strong. Trust me, I'm going to fail this question. And other way around, if my syllabus area B and C are super strong, even if I am a bit shaky with respect to syllabus area F, I will end up, you know, doing pretty well with respect to this question. So what about part A? You have to have discussion on the quality management, ethical and other professional issues. What about the audit junior? Well, you had a discussion with the with some of the members of the or junior members of the audit team. And one of the audit junior made the following comments. The audit junior said that this audit has been quite time pressured. The audit manager told the juniors not to perform some of the planned audit procedures. Why not? According to ISA 300, you need to follow the audit plan. And only audit plan can only be deviated when there is a rational reason behind, uh, you know, in order, in order to deviate from the plan. So if we have deviated from the plan without any justifiable reason, that's a compromise of quality and we might not be able to gather or we might not have gathered sufficient appropriate evidence. And the audit manager said, let's ignore directors and share capital because these are low risk. These are material by nature items. These are always considered as high risk areas. So there is a doubt over the competence of the audit manager as well. He also instructed us not to use the firm's statistical sampling method in selecting trade receivable balance for testing as it would be quicker. Again, considering the fact it was a time pressure audit, he is trying to come up with something where they are not going to follow the firm's method. Rather, he is asking everyone to follow their own judgment. Those juniors are not competent enough. Their judgment might be wrong. Again, it's a compromise on quality. Two of the juniors were given the task of auditing trade tables and going concern. How juniors could perform such a delicate work such as going concern? The audit manager asked us to review each other's work. No, at, in an audit firm, at the audit level, everyone's work has to be reviewed by his or her senior. That's how the firms operate. So they are going to review each other's work they will not be able to figure out any mistake because their competence and experience would be same. I was discussing group's taxation position with the financial controller when she said she was struggling to calculate defer tax. That should be recognized. The defer tax asset has arisen because several of the group subsidiaries have been loss making this year, creating unutilized tax losses. As I had just studied defer tax at college, I did the calculation of the group's tax position. So the audit junior performed the defer tax calculation for the group. The audit manager said this saved time as we now would not wait as, as we now would not have to audit the defer tax figure. That would create self-review threat. That would create management threat. So this is a question where all the ethical issues and the quality management issues would be created. And I think, I think, okay. So I was just checking that whether this question is part of that file or not. Okay, this question is not part of that file because the file which we created was separate on ethics and separate on quality management. But this is a beautiful question because that question beautifully covers, yes, 
thank you very much the name of the person is retriever that question covers both ethics and quality management within one topic so before i move on i just want one confirmation from your side i want you to use the chat box now and please tell me can you wait if your b and c are well prepared automatically you will start loving f okay so please prepare this topic now in order to nail this topic the best approach is look for the technical article so i'm just going to click on other assignment now when it comes to other assignment there are the first two technical articles are on social environmental and sustainability information part 1 and part 2 the next two technical articles which we recently covered in the regular classes forensic audit and performance information in the public sector so once you are going to read this technical article on forensic audit you will realize that there is nothing to worry about well first of all you have to understand what kinds of different frauds are there then you have to read the accepting the investigation this is really really important really important you as a forensic audit must initially consider whether your firm has got the necessary skills and experience and competence to accept the work so that's the first accepting based consideration competence resources and skill why because this is a specialist nature this, this is a job which requires very you know high level of competence high level of knowledge you need, you should be absolutely crystal clear with, with respect to the legal framework itself so that's the first thing you as an investigator must also have received training in interview and interrogation techniques so your communication skills should be high you know of the top quality another another factor before you accept the client are you able to maintain the safe custody of evidence you need to have training and competence of this as well now there are additional consideration which should be considered by the investigator if he or she is requested to perform by the audit client so imagine i am your audit client imagine i am your audit client and i have requested you to perform a forensic audit as well if that is the case extra ethical questions will jump in why because as the investigation firm would be potentially exposed to self review advocacy and management threats to objectivity how self review once you will perform the forensic audit you might be testing those numbers which you initially prepared why advocacy because you might have to present yourself as an expert witness in front of the court so that creates advocacy threat you might be recommending certain things at the end of the forensic assignment yes within the audit within the forensic audit report you have to highlight what actions the firm or the company should take in order to avoid such an issue so that leads to management threat as well so unless robust safeguards are in place the firm should not provide audit and forensic investigation services to the same client but let's have a counter argument let's have a counter argument what about the commercial acumen what about the commercial consideration what about the profitability well indeed this is going to be a high c level based assignment because that requires specialist nature of work so the firm would like to be involved in it firm would like to earn money and the firm would do not wish to you know let go the client so these are all important factors this technical article so this is a very important technical article and once you are done with this technical article once you have prepared this topic from the book there are couple of questions which you need to prepare retriever and bear what about the exhibit 2 of the retriever well the audit committee of the group has contacted you the external auditor of the firm and they want to discuss something with you what happened well on 1st june 20x5 an accident took place and a burglary happened at the company's warehouse where the inventory was stored and that those were finished good according to the cctv film the thieves were loading a lorry which also belonged to the group the last inventory count took place on 30th april so may june on on so one month after one month that burglary happened the group has an insurance policy 
and the forensic accounting department has been asked to provide the forensic accounting service to determine the amount of claim in respect of that event. The insurance covers the cost of the asset loss as a result of the theft. So I, I'm, just, I'm just wondering whether the lorry would be covered or not. It is thought that the amount of the claim will be immaterial to the group's financial statement, and there is no ethical threat that if we are going to perform this assignment. So we are not supposed to have discussion on ethics right now. What procedures, recommend the procedures which you need to perform in order to determine the amount of the insurance claim? Well, first of all, you have to review the insurance policy and try to understand that what are the terms and conditions, what items are covered. You need to review the bank statement and cash book in order to confirm whether the premium has been paid or, you know, if the premium is unpaid when the event happened, in that case, we might not be able to recover anything from the insurance company. We have to review the board minutes post that event in order to understand how concerned they were and what was their point of view. You need to look up the CCTV footage in order to figure it out, how many boxes were loaded. You know, you need to develop your own estimate. What is the quantity in one box multiplied by how many boxes were, you know, were stolen. You need to review the insurance policy and try to understand what items are covered and what about the lorry? Is it covered or not? You need to review the correspondence between the company and the lawyer in order to figure it out. What are the probabilities of, you know, successful claim? So these are the things which you need to apply. Okay. So let's go to last part before we, I move on to the next assignment. What about the reporting aspect? Once you are done with the forensic investigation, once the forensic investigation is complete, the forensic accountant must submit a report of their finding. This is different. So please wake up. The report, a forensic report, a basic forensic report will have the following. Number one, a summary of the procedures you perform. That's unlike the audit. When it comes to audit report, we don't reveal what procedures we apply. But over here, I will reveal the summary of the procedures I performed. Secondly, I will also reveal the summary of the results of those procedures. I will also highlight what was the outcome of those procedures. If there was any limitation in the scope of the engagement, I will also highlight that as well. And I will also highlight the conclusions which I drive, the conclusions I reach. So this is a typical forensic audit report. Are we clear with this topic number three? Can I have confirmation? Are we clear? I will share a list with you in the WhatsApp group where there will be the name of the question. Along with that, there will be, I will mention the, the topic and the subtopic so that you could understand which topic has got forensic accounting, which topic has got ethical issues, which topic has got what and that and this and that. Okay. Okay. Now, the fourth topic. And this is a very, 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 very important topic for the upcoming attempt. I'm telling you for the upcoming attempt, this is a very important topic. Prospective financial information. And majority of the students hate this topic because this topic will always have numbers in it. Calculation, prospective financial information. Now, what is prospective financial information? Well, prospective financial information means the financial information which is not a historical data, rather it is about the future. So when the prospective financial information word comes in my mind, it means it's a financial information, but it is based on assumptions. Assumptions in relation to the events that may occur in the future. So a company could prepare a profit forecast, including the statement of profit or loss account and the statement of financial position, or the company could prepare a cash flow forecast. Now, what matters you need to consider before accepting a, an assignment on, on, on review of the prospective financial information? Well, as with any engagement, the reporting accountant must consider the risk of involvement with prospective financial information 
prior to accepting the engagement. So before I accept the engagement, I need to consider the risk. What risk? Well, all those risks, the ethical issues, you might be seen as invest. What if you are encouraging the investment in the company? So that would create advocacy threat. What if you don't have the competence? What if you don't have the resources? What if the deadline is too close? All those are acceptance considerations. Why are why a company would prepare? Why a company would prepare prospective financial information? The question is why the company would prepare prospective financial information? Well, the company would prepare prospective financial information, maybe in order to support their going concern assumption, maybe in order to support their going concern assumption, or maybe they need to get a loan. And in order to support their loan application, they need to prepare a pros prospective financial information. So this is usually in the context of supporting a loan application. So imagine I am your audit client and I need to obtain a loan from my bank, but my bank is saying, well, we will issue a loan or we will renew the loan, but we want to have a look at your future. So please, can you prepare prospective financial information? The client, that is Ahmed would say, okay, fine, I will prepare prospective financial information. But once I will prepare the prospective financial information, nobody is going to trust it until or unless I come up with some kind of assurance. So I will contact most likely my external auditor to please review the prospective financial information. Sometimes the prospective financial information is prepared as part of the going concern assessment within the audit. Considering the fact that the transactions have not happened yet, your procedures will be focused not on the supporting documentation because there is a possibility there are no supporting documentation. You need to test the reasonableness of the assumption. You need to figure it out whether there is a consistency within the assumptions, whether the historical assumptions were true or not, whether the historical prospective financial information was correct or not. Now, there is a very, very, very important question on the same topic, and it's called Jensen. And I will be a little slow with respect to this question. Why? Because all those questions are available in the portal, but this most word goes. All the questions are available in the portal, but this Jensen is not available. Even Whistler is available, which is also a question on prospective. So if you want to know a couple of questions on prospective financial information, I think Clay is also on prospective, Jensen, Whistler. These three questions are on prospective financial information. What about Jensen? Okay, before I move on to the Jensen, please check out this question. The question is called Morit. Okay. And do you remember what was the name of the seventh file which we need to create? Seventh file? Matters to consider before accepting a forensic audit assignment, a due diligence assignment, a review of prospective financial information. Remember that. Now let's check out the part one of the part A for six marks. Explain the matters that should be considered by the audit firm before accepting the engagement to review and report on the client prospective financial information. Now, if you are the auditor, that might create management threat. That you might not have the resources. You might not have the competence. You might The deadline might be too close. There could be all sorts of problems. We are not going to have discussion on that. But have you realized it is so important? And then what? Part two, the procedure which you need to apply on the cash flow forecast. Is this clear? So those who are preparing file number seven called matters to be considered before accepting an engagement to be precise on prospective financial information, please add Morid as well. Now, why I'm rating Morid as, a, as such an important question? Well, let's go to part B. What about part B? Now, it's you. Six plus seven, you are done with 13 marks. Okay, 
assuming two professional marks, you are done with 15 marks. Assume that. Now, assume that you are not that well prepared for the syllabus area. This is all from F, right? This is all from F. Okay, let's assume you score just five or six, five out of 15. That's a very poor number. Very poor number. Okay. What about part B? Is it easy or difficult? Assuming you have already prepared a file on ethical issues, which I've shared in the WhatsApp group, along with highlighting the professional mark. What about part B? Can you please let me know? Comment on the ethical and professional issues. There are one dozen questions in that file. So as a student, including professional marks, I think I will be able to score 10 out of 10 over here. At least 8 out of 10. Now, 8 out of 10, 5 out of 15, 8 plus 55, 13 out of 25. Yup, I have passed the question. I'm not saying you to score 5 out of 15. What I'm saying is, if your syllabus area B and C are strong, you will start loving F and eventually you will score more in F. My AAA student who has to attempt the paper on 4th December 2023, my AAA student who has to secure the paper, not attempt the paper, on 4th December 2023, the regular students which are having an interaction with me on a daily basis, you know what? They have already prepared this file. They have already prepared this file. And they have already prepared this file as well. So 7 plus 6, 13. Let's add five more, uh, two, three professional marks. So they will be able to score 15 out of 17 out of these two parts. And what about the procedures? Well, they have created a file for the procedures as well. Remember? Okay, those that file in relation to procedures are general procedures. We can add cash flow for cost procedure as well. So, guys, how many files I asked for? Seven. File number one on ethics. File number three was on procedure. File number seven on matters to consider before accepting an assignment. What about Moritz? Is it a morale booster question? Yes or no? I've shared... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I've shared the link of the WhatsApp group all over again, but I think this is the link of the WhatsApp group number one. There are two groups. The first group is called AAA Global Group for the December attempt. That is full now. But the second group is called AAA Global Group 1. The group 1 is actually the group 2. I've shared the link of the group 1. That is the group 2 because the first group is full. So are we? Are you guys going to prepare those 7 files? And once you are prepared with those 7 files, are you going to you know prepare this question by yourself called Moritz? Promise me that you are going to prepare Moritz. If you are from WIPI, SBM or anywhere, are you going to prepare Moritz? Once you have prepared those seven files before your final mock exam, which is on 24, promise me on that right now. And if you're going to breach the promise, then what? Okay, so it's a promise from Ibrahim to, to, to Hajra. Everyone has promised. I hope so. You will keep up your promise. Okay, what about Jensen? Let's explore Jensen. The part A is explain the matters which should be considered by Jensen and company before accepting the engagement to review and report on the end company's prospective financial information. So I just told you that we need to create seven files and out of those seven files, the seventh file is called what matters we need to consider before accepting an engagement. Now, that could be a forensic audit engagement. That could be a typical audit engagement. That could be a due diligence engagement. That could be a forensic audit engagement. That could be a review of interim financial information based, uh, based engagement. 
as of now, just like the previous question, which is called Morris, Jensen has got the same requirement. What matters I need to consider? Who am I? The audit firm called Jensen Company before accepting the engagement. What engagement? Review and report on the company, Navi Company's prospective financial information, six marks. So we just had a discussion on Morit. The part A had two exam requirements in Morit. The first part was same to same, exactly copy paste. The only difference is the name of the audit firm and the client is different. Even the marks are the same, six marks. Okay, what about the part two? Assuming that the firm has accepted the engagement, what procedures we need to perform on the company's forecasted statement of profit or loss. Now, the previous question had procedures on the company's prospective cash flow forecast. And this question has got procedures on the company's profit or loss. That's the only difference we have. That's it. Done. The difference is forecasted statement of profit or loss. The previous question was forecasted cash flow forecast. What about part B? Well, using the information contained in Exhibit 2, comment on the quality of the planning and performance of the audit of Watson Company discussing quality management and other professional issues. Can you please let me know using the chat box which syllabus area the examiner is trying to target in the part B for 7 marks, adding 3 professional marks, let's call it 10 marks. Which syllabus area? Okay, <laughs> to the event he dressed for. No, no, no. Basically, somebody called me up uh, as a reminder that let's go. And I said, no, I'm not going right now. Because I didn't start at 12. So I need I, I need to finish this course. And I'm not going anywhere until or unless we all realize that if B, C, and F is prepared, we are going to pass the paper. Trust me. You know what? Let me tell you a story. The guy who just came in, I'm not going to name him. And if somebody out there who knows his name, please don't use his name in the chat box. The guy who just came in, and I and we had a discussion for a couple of minutes, then he just went away. He passed triple A on six attempts. Six attempts. Triple A on six attempts. And mind you, I didn't teach him triple A. Okay, he passed AAA on six attempts, like three, four years ago. Every time he used to prepare B and E, quiz and completion review and reporting, his preparation for the syllabus area D and E, okay, then, then hold your thoughts and hold your emotions. So B and E used to be so strong that once he used to come out of the examination hall, he used to call me. The first person he used to call me was me. Sir, I'm done with the paper. And I used to ask one question, all, one question only. How much you attempted? And he used to say 70, 72, 74, 70, 68, 75. And I used to hang up and I used to feel so depressed because I, every time I knew it that he is not going to make it. And you know what marks he used to score among all those failures? You won't believe 47, 48, 46, 47, 48, never 42, 41, obviously never 50. After two, three, four attempts, I realized that there are two things which are his problems. Two things. A, Typing speed B, he's not preparing B and F. He hates the topic of ethics and he hates the topic of other assignments. So he never prepared other assignments. Now, when I started taking interest, he, he made me realize or he revealed that other assignments have got six topics. So it's very hard to prepare those six topics. And now and then, when once you have prepared those six, six topics, you have to prepare at least a couple of questions on each topic. So it's time to go. So he used to focus on B and F, which is short, short areas. And there is another uncertainty which is with respect to F. Maybe F is not tested in the exam. What if? So finally, in the sixth 
or seventh attempt, fifth or sixth, seventh attempt, he started his preparation from F rather than D and E. So he prepared F and then D. Obviously, C quality management as well. And in that attempt, he attempted 95 mark paper. And once he was out of the examination hall, it's all before COVID, I guess. He called me and he, I asked how much you attempted. He said 90 plus 95. And I said, you will pass the paper this time. And how, how he was able to attempt that much paper? Because this time around, he was prepared for the ethic, for the quality management and for the other assignments. So guys, what I'm trying to tell you that all over the world, the students are very well prepared for syllabus area D. And this is 25% of your paper. All over the world, students are very, very well prepared for E. And this is another 25% of your paper. What about B and C? That might be another... That might be another 25% of your paper. And what about A, F, and the current issues? And for current issues, you need to look up the technical articles under the category of current issues. That makes another 25%. So my focus is this for today. My focus is on this. How to prepare current issues before someone asks me this question? Let me answer this question by, by myself. How to prepare current issues? So again, you've got to go back to your technical article and prepare current issues and cover multiple areas. These two areas, click on current issues. Well, there are three technical articles prepare these. And on the cover multiple areas, there are two technical articles cover these two technical articles as well. I think last week at VP, we covered these two technical articles. Obviously, the recording is available. You can watch it. So these two technical articles are very important. Okay, let's go back to Jensen. Sumera, which current issue is relevant for December attempt? Well, you need to look up to the website. Today is 18 November. Maybe they will publish a technical article after a week or so. They can publish a technical article just before the exam, three to four days before the exam. As of now, there is no one particular topic which is important for technical article. Data analytics, big data, these are all development, computer assisted technique. Okay, so uh, when Using the information contained in Exhibit 2, comment on the quality of the planning and performance of the audit of Watson Company discussing quality management and other special issues. Raised. This is a topic on the syllabus area C quality management because quality management and professional issues of there is not much ethical issue over here, you know. So B e and C again, but more importantly, C. Okay. So let's go to the part A. What factors we need to consider before accepting the engagement? Let's read the exhibit number one. Who are you? You are an audit manager. We're in an audit firm called Jensen Company. And you are you guys offer a range of audit and assurance services to your client. The following exhibit available below provide information relevant to the question. The first client is called Narly Company, and they have requested you to provide an assurance report on the prospective financial information. Let's exhibit, let's ignore the exhibit two. Okay, what about the exhibit one? One of your audit client is Narly Company. Now guys, this is an audit client. So if I am going to be involved in the prospective financial information review, that might create advocacy threat, that might create management threat, that might create self-interest threat. So, so watch out. One of your audit clients is Narli Company, which operates a commercial haulage company. Narli Company has been an audit client for the last five years and is currently planning a significant expansion of its operation into a new geographical area and jurisdiction. In order to finance the planned expansion, now they want new, they want finance because they need to expand. The company needs to purchase additional heavy goods vehicles, expanding its warehousing facilities and recruit more drivers. 
So company need fund, okay? The company is also planning a major advertising and marketing campaign targeted at potential customers in the new jurisdiction. Okay, so they need more funds. The company finance director, Suzanne, has approached you to ask if your firm will provide a report on the prospective financial information which has been prepared in support of a loan application. So that's what I said in my notes. The prospective financial information is either prepared in order to support the going concern assumption or it is prepared in order to support a loan application. The application is for a new long-term loan of 22 million from the company's current lender, which it intends to use exclusively to finance the planned expansion. The company currently has an existing long-term loan of 31 million from the same bank, which is redeemable in five years. The company has provided you with the following extract from the prospective financial information, which will form part of the company's loan application. So all that financial information and all those notes are important for your part two, where you have to apply the procedures. As of now, you have to discuss what matters you need to consider, what matters you need to consider before accepting such an assignment. Okay. Whenever you are whenever you are considering an ex an engagement such as this one review of prospective financial information, we have to look for. Uh, we need to consider whether the risk is at an acceptable level or not. For just like any other assignment, if the risk is not acceptable, if the risk is on the very higher side, I think we should not accept that particular assignment. So that's the first thing first. Secondly. Uh, integrity of the management is not question is not a question mark over here because we are already auditing them for the last five years. But the competence and the resources, the availability of resources, is is a is a thing which we need to consider. Do we have the resources to do this job? And what about those prospect? Once we will review the prospective financial information, and that will be presented in front of the bank, that might be or that might be considered as something that we are encouraging the investment. So that might be treated as an advocacy threat. Or that might be considered as an advocacy threat along with that. We might be seen as, uh, uh, as we are encouraging the investment So before I accept such an assignment, I need to consider whether the client is only going to use this prospective financial information with respect to one bank or are they going to publish it publicly. So I need to know who are the intended users of that particular information. Similarly, so when considering acceptance of the engagement to review Narli company's prospective financial information, the audit firm must consider whether it is ethically acceptable to perform the review. Is it ethically acceptable? The review of prospective financial information represents a non-assurance service. An international code of ethics for professional accountant state that providing this service in addition to the audit may create an advocacy threat because you will be promoting the position of the client. Now, this is a paragraph on advocacy threat. This is a paragraph on self-interest. This is on self -interest. Now, let's see. The review of prospective financial information is a non-assurance service and according to ICSBA, International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, the code states that when you are going to provide this service in addition to the audit, that will create an advocacy threat. Why or how? An advocacy threat arises when the auditor is asked to promote or re represent the company in some way. Now, in this situation, there is a risk that auditor will be seen as promoting the investment. The auditor will be seen as promoting the interest of the client to the third party, such as bank. Well, I might be perceived as if someone who is encouraging the bank to give the loan. I will be considered as someone who is biased in favor of the client. Therefore, I will not be able to maintain my objectivity. Is this clear? You will be scored you will be able to score at least one mark. Now, accepting this assignment may also create self-interest threat. Why? The auditor being perceived to have an interest in the outcome of the negotiations with the third party. 
and which may motivate the auditor to behave in order to protect that interest. What if, if I will get, if the client will get that loan, if the client will get that particular loan, they will expand. I will get a bigger audit fee next year. So this will create self-interest threat as well. A self-review threat may also arise because the negotiations may result in facts and amount which will form part of audited financial statement. And as a result, the auditor will be auditing the financial statement, which in part at least represent work which they themselves have performed. So I, once I will be reviewing the prospective financial information, I will be involved in some work which I've already performed as an auditor. Or once I will be performing the audit, I will be you know, focusing on the work which I did as part of the other assignment. So that will also lead to self-review threat as well. In the case of Narli company, the advocacy threat appears to be particularly significant as a firm would be seen to be promoting the interest of the audit line to the bank. So it is, therefore it is, it, the auditor should therefore only accept the engagement if the safeguards can be put in place. Now what safeguards? First of all, there should be a separate team for prospective financial information other than the audit. Independent seniors should review the prospective financial information work. We need to have discussion of the potential ethical issues with those charged with the money. So they should be on board. But there are many other issues which we need to consider before accepting such an assignment. Who are the intended users of that information? Whether that information will be for general or limited distribution. What assumptions they are going to use? Are they going to use best estimates or are they going to use hypothetical assumptions? Because best estimates are relatively reliable. What elements to be included in that information? Is it going to be a forecasted statement of profit and loss? Or is it going to be a statement of financial position? Or is it going to be cash flow forecast? What period? Because if the period is too long, that creates you know, more uncertainty. So the period that should be covered. So the audit firm must also consider whether the firm has sufficient staff available with skills and competence to be involved in such an engagement. Overall, if the risk is on the higher side and if the risk is unacceptable acceptable, or the assumptions are clearly unrealistic, we should not be involved in such an activity. Okay, very important question from Sumera. This is a question for six marks. Six marks. What or how many points do we need to write? First of all, all those points which I just discussed, you cannot and you should not discuss all points. So up to two marks for each matter explained, advocates, auditors, independence, including advocacy, self-review, self-interest. Now, what do you think? A typical student will discuss all of them, self-interest, self-review, self-advocacy, no. So two marks could be scored out of those ethical issues. Who are going to be the intended users? And is it going to be for limited distribution or uh, you know, not a limited distribution, another two marks out of those two points. What kind of assumptions and what kind of time period? So assumptions, one mark, time period, one mark, another two marks, six marks, you are done. What about the, uh, do we have the experience and competent staff? Do, are we, will we be able to manage the timeline? So one, one another two marks. What safeguards? We need to come up with separate teams. We need to make sure the senior management reviews the financial information, and we need to make sure that if uh, if we if the risk is on the higher side, we should not accept it. So another two marks. What kind of information? What is the scope? Is it going to be pro pro uh, is it going to be prospective cash flow forecast or the proper loss account? So two plus four plus six plus eight plus ten plus twelve. You can score twelve marks, but maximum marks available are six. As a student, you need to create your own answer. If you want to squeeze certain points, squeeze them. Try to realize if you are going to have discussion that what kind of assumptions they are going to use, hypothetical or best estimate, you are going to get one mark. Time period, another one mark. Will you be able to rewrite that? Will you be able to read the solution and understand it and reproduce your own answer? Can you do it now on your own? Especially considering the fact I will share a file with you 
which is called matters to consider before accepting this or that assignment. In fact, I expect that you are going to add this particular exam requirement, this particular answer in that file. In fact, you have to add more it as well. Is this, is this clear? Why are the three threads only two marks max? Because that is an ideal answer, having a discussion on all possible threads. But realistically speaking, a student will not be able to figure out and have a discussion on all the threads in the real exam. So maximum two marks, because there are other issues which you need to consider. What if you, you highlight six threads and you score six marks out of it and ignoring all other factors? Is this clear, Umar? That's why the AAA examiner sometimes comes up with a cap. Okay, fine, there are marks available in order to have discussion on the ethical issues, but max two marks. That's the painful thing in AAA. Momina, your question is not available to everyone. Make it public, please. Okay, Momina, raise the question, sir. Headings are compulsory or can we write in all? Can we write all in form of points or paragraphs? Okay. If you are not going to use headings, I'm not asking you to come up with dozens and dozens and dozens of headings. If you are not going to come up with headings at all, you are going to lose a professional mark. A professional mark. Sir, for example, in this question, safeguarding point, not our marks, right? They are only asked to tell matter. No, no, that's not the case. At any point of time, if you have realized that there are certain ethical issues which might, you know, come, which might become a barrier to accept a client, you need to look for the safeguard. If the appropriate safeguard could be implemented, in that case, you can you can go and accept that that engagement. Guys, these are generic points. The nature of assumption, it's a generic point applicable to any question. The elements to be included, generic point, the period covered, the availability of the resources, the intended users of the information. These are all generic points. So you can score four to five marks from here. But apart from that, you must utilize the data itself and you've got to realize that that would create self-review, self-interest, and more importantly, advocacy threat. Most importantly, advocacy threat because you'll be promoting that particular, you'll be promoting the investment. Sir, how to sort this answer? I will share a file, which according to me is the file number seven out of the total files we need to create. I will share a file. Okay, let's go back to the question. Let's go back to the question. And the question is, part two. Assuming the Jensen company accepts the engagement, design the examination procedures which should be performed in respect of the company's forecast statement of profit or loss. Forecast statement of profit or loss. The first procedure which comes in my mind is I need to review the forecasted. I need to review the forecasted profit or loss and make sure that the accounting policies are consistently applied. I need to apply, uh, I need to review certain supporting documentation, such as for finance costs, look for the loan agreement, for other, you know, for certain expenses, loan for the support, look for the supporting documentation, such as the loan agreement, in order to confirm the finance cost, if, whether it is in line with the loan agreement or not. And any other procedure which comes in your mind, please let me know. Sir, as there is no communication skill mark influence, I, why we, we have to use the heading? Well, if you we'll talk about the professional skill marks at the end of the session, any other procedure in relation to the forecasted cash flow statement or forecasted profit loss? Yes. Very basic procedure, you need to recalculate the entire profit or loss account, make sure there is no arithmetical mistake. You need to review uh, you need to review the profit or loss account in order to make sure that the accounting policies have been consistently applied. Yes, there is a huge question mark over the competency of the one who has prepared that. So look for the fact that you prepared that particular and look for its competence. And yes, look for certain missing items. Maybe there are certain items which are very obvious, but they are missing. 
and you need to apply analytical procedures as well so calculate the change in revenue as a percentage calculate the change in a change in cost of sale as a percentage to calculate the change in operating profit as a percentage and if there is a significant fluctuation or unusual movement you need to have discussion with the management so if you have prepared procedures in your tabel a and if you have created a file on procedures i think procedures are not going to create a lot of trouble for you okay yes in the chat box there are very important procedures yes uh, starting in reverse order yes chapa compared underlying assumptions of the management with auditor understanding yes make sure the assumptions are consistent with each other and similarly you can also compare the prospective financial information with the with their prior year prospective financial information if they have ever prepared it or maybe certain period have lapsed so look for the comparison of the prospective financial information with the actual results and so where i come up with the lots with load the procedure yes we calculate the forecasted profit or loss make sure at it's accurate cost it review the accounting policies make sure they are consistently applied yes you got to know who prepared the profit or loss account make sure that person was competent enough to do his job omar is saying inspect the agreement relating to expense such as rental agreement such as loan agreement well done well done perfect yes the according to the self solution recalculation of the forecasted statement of profit or loss why what what action i'm going to perform recalculate from where i'm going to get the evidence from the accounting books or record but why to confirm the accuracy so three ingredients confirmation that the accounting policies used in the forecast statement are consistent with those used in the audit yes you got to make sure that the accounting policies or the standard which have been applied in the forecasted profit and loss are in line with the, with their audited financial statements we need to have discussion with the management regarding the assumptions make sure the assumptions are reasonable and consistent you got to review the market research in relation to the company's existing market and the new market and discuss with the management to assess whether the growth pattern is growth pattern being forecasted in revenue represent reasonable or not what if the market research report says that the growth in revenue would be 5% but according to their profit and loss account the growth percentage is 10% so obviously it, it's not consistent just like umar yes and shafak obtain copies of any new customer contracts get the written representation from management that they that they have uh, confirming that the reasonableness and completeness of the assumptions and as umaira was saying competence and experience of the client who prepared the forecast it's all is important you can recalculate the depreciation on the new vehicle make sure it is in line with the in line with the forecasted profit or loss account yes recent utility bills could be could be helpful in order to figure it out whether the amounts recorded in the forecasted statement are correct or not perform analytical review and then have a discussion with the management in relation to the you know numbers what is the growth in revenue what is the growth in cost of sale if things are not in line then you need to have discussion with the management now we are only left i don't understand the procedure suggested by omar where is the procedure by the omar omar inspect agreement relating to expense okay okay what umar is trying to say is that so the subject matter is prospective financial information so the transaction have not happened as yet but there are certain items such as rental expenses finance cost these items could be confirmed by looking or inspecting their agreement so if the company has got a rental agreement by reviewing and understanding the rental agreement i will be able to understand what is the amount of rent that should be recognized in the prospective profit or loss account is this clear is this clear okay thank you very much thank you for the yes great okay let's discuss the last part and the last part is you need to evaluate the quality management issues one of your colleagues at jensen company rodney even has been taken ill at short notice and you have been temporarily assigned as audit manager on watson company an it consultancy company which is listed on a second year investment market 
The final audit of Watson Company for the year ended 31st March 2005 is approaching completion, and you are in the process of reviewing the audit working paper. The draft financial statements for the year recognize profit before tax and total assets. So these numbers could be important for the sake of materiality. The audit supervisor, who is a part qualified, I, well, why audit supervisor was part qualified, has sent you an email which the following extract is taken. It's great to have you on board as I was beginning to worry that there will be no manager review of our working paper prior to the final audit clearance meeting next week. One issue which I wanted to check with you is that Watson Company has introduced a cash settled share based payment scheme by granting its directors share appreciation rights. Mind you, this is something which is material by nature because that has got directors in it. And they have introduced it for the first time. That also creates a high level of risk. This was not identified as planning as a high risk area. It's a compromise on quality because that should have been considered as a high risk area because of two reasons. A, it's something material by nature. B, it is. it was the first time the company introduced it, so there could be a mistake. The SARS were granted on 1st April 2004, at which date the client obtained a valuation of the right, which was performed by an external firm of valuers. I have filed a copy of the valuation report and I have looked at the valuers online and I have found a very professional looking website which confirms that they know what they are doing. It's not good. If you have to rely on the work of a valuer by only looking at their website does not give you an assurance that the valuer is competent enough, they are objective enough, they are not biased and their work is well planned and well documented. So again, it's a compromise on quality. The cost of the SARS being based on this valuation is being appropriately recognized over the three years investing period and straight line expense of 195,000 has been recognized in the statement of profit and loss on this basis. That a corresponding equity reserve has also been correctly recognized. That's wrong. That's wrong. What's the mistake? Yes, that should have been recognized as a liability. Well done. Yes, those procedures are so those procedures can be applied to any other statement of profit and loss based uh, on prospective financing information as well. Why not? Yes. So that prompt they the corresponding equity. No, not equity. They should have recognized it as a liability. The amount also seems immaterial. What does that seem immaterial mean? We need to calculate the materiality. Once we will calculate the materiality, we will recognize, yes, it's immaterial in terms of monetary value. But mind you, it is material by nature. And I cannot see any need to propose any amendment to the financial statement in relation to either the amounts recognized or the disclosures made in the note to the financial statement. Well, according to ISA 220, which is about the quality, audit quality, there are certain, there are many aspects which makes me believe, which makes me believe that there are many compromises on quality. The first compromise on quality was that the audit supervisor was the audit supervisor was part qualified. So the assignment of a part qualified supervisor to audit the listed entity, it's an indication that the overall audit was not planned properly. The audit supervisor uh, appears to have inadequate skills and experience to audit the public interest ent entity, considering the fact that, that that individual was only part qualified and he is involved in an audit of a listed entity that itself indicates poor audit planning. This is evidenced by the incorrect treatment of the share-based payment scheme. Because he was not that skilled, he made huge blunders. Why he made a blunder? This is evidenced by the incorrect treatment of the share-based payment scheme and the audit supervisor's comment that basing the expense in the proper loss account on the valuation at the date of the grant is appropriate and that the recognition of equity reserve on the statement of financial position is correct. That is all wrong. According to IFRS 2 share-based payment, the valuation of the share appreciation rights for a cash settle scheme should be updated on the reporting date and the standard requires the recognition of the cumulative cost of the scheme as a liability, not an equity reserve. So at the reporting date, as a liability, not as an equity reserve, Yes, the audit supervisor also fails to recognize that share-based payment scheme, which has got to do with the directors. It's a related party transaction. Yes, it is not material in terms of profit. It is not material in terms of asset, but it is certainly material by nature. So that was another mistake by him. And because it was material by nature, that should have been fully disclosed 
in relation to uh, in accordance with i24 related party transactions but there were other quality issues as well for example why audit manager was not replaced earlier considering the fact there was no audit manager there was inadequate direction and supervision during the audit second Jensen and company also failed to monitor the progress of the audit and therefore to update and change the audit plan as necessary during the course of the audit as required by ICC. This is considering the fact they have introduced, uh, you know, that team for the first time, the audit plan should have changed. This is evidenced by the fact that audit clearance meeting is scheduled for next week and the initial manager review is only just taking place. The manager should have reviewed things earlier on. The auditor must therefore evaluate that the management expert that has the necessary competence skills to do the job because we relied on the work of the on the expert by checking out their website. That's not good enough. What if they are not competent enough? What if they are not they do not have the necessary skills to do the job? So there are many ethical, many quality related issues. Let me summarize those issues for you. For example, first of all, that share-based scheme was a complex judgmental area that should have been considered as a high-risk area at the planning stage. So there was a fault at the planning stage. Part qualified supervisor might not have skills and experience to handle a listed entity. That's another mark for you. Incorrect treatment of the share-based payment scheme was not recognized. That's another compromise for you. Recognition as an equity reserve, that's not correct. That should have been recognized as a liability. Another mistake. Uh, one extra mark if you are going to calculate the materiality and you will highlight that, yes, it is immaterial with respect to profit. It is immaterial with respect to asset. Yes, it is material by nature. So according to IS24, related party transaction, that should have been disclosed. Management should be asked to make the adjustment in relation to error and the management should be asked to, to provide the disclosure. Error should have been calculated and adjustment requested and related party disclosures should be incorporated. Clearly, audit manager was not replaced earlier on and as a result of that, staff was not properly supervised and not trained. Moreover, the partner seems to be sleeping somewhere and the partner is not monitoring the overall progress of the audit. The partner, the manager is doing the work too late and lack of audit evidence over the external auditor. What about the competence and capabilities of and the objectivity of that external uh, value? You didn't do anything. You just relied on the website. By just looking at their website, that's not adequate. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus 1 extra mark for the relevant calculation. So according to the suggested answer, you can score 14 marks, but you just need seven to nail the paper to score full mark. Are we clear? Okay, let's go to the chat box. I have doubt in ISA 3400 general and limited distribution. If it is a limited distribution, I'm only going to be accountable and held responsible for that party. If it is for general distribution, that creates a higher risk for me. The assignment has been done by part qualified who is not competent enough to assess the inherent risk in assumption. It shows the lack of planning done by management and shows incompetency of the manager. Absolutely, yes, Hasib. Hi, can you share the WhatsApp group link? Yeah, you got it. Are we clear? Temporary manager have been appointed at the stage of the completion stage, which creates concern over the quality. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Incorrect accounting treatment was ignored. Materiality was ignored. Related party transaction was ignored. Audit manager was not assigned earlier on. There was something very new. For the first time, they have introduced chair base. That was not picked up. So there are many, many mistakes in the question. Are we clear? So now if you have got any concerns or questions, please use the chat box now. Raise your question. Yes, I will share those files. I will. I, I remember everything. I need to share those seven files. I need to share a file which will be about the list of questions along with their subtopic. I have to share a file in relation to technical articles along with the reference of the question name. Any other thing? Okay, I'll share the slides as well. Mind you, there are two groups, two free groups. 
in which sequence we should attempt the paper that's a very debatable topic well shafak i will answer this question tomorrow surely i will answer this question tomorrow you it's your responsibility to remind me okay when you know as i mentioned earlier forensic audit does not appear in the exams according to kaplan so is it the least important for the other assignment forensic assignment was tested in september 2023 is there anyone who could confirm best way to prepare current issues is to prepare all the technical articles which are in relation to the current issues is there anyone who could confirm yes ananya has confirmed and but who said that this topic is not tested how many minutes should be allocated to the question number 1 well the marking scheme and the sequence i will share my thoughts on this tomorrow uh sorry the sequence along with that the time management will discuss that tomorrow yes what he yes it was in september again in order to risk and matter to consider all accounting standard related to can be written in same approach right yes shafak absolutely when we are having a discussion on mayor approach question and when we are having a discussion on audit risk question more or less the approach remains the same in the tomorrow session i will highlight more important technical articles which could be helpful for the question number 1 because I, we didn't discuss anything in relation to question number 1 today by the way by the way by the way in order to prepare syllabus area b this is a technical article ethics in the triple a exam at which we we covered this technical article ethics in the triple a exam and for the preparation of syllabus area c quality management there are two technical articles and we covered those as well okay thank you very much that we have always thank you very much deep okay timing for tomorrow session i got late today i was stuck tomorrow i'll be on time 12 o'clock my local time 12 pm pst plus 5 gmt are we done i'll send you the reminder in the whatsapp group thank you very much everyone of please before you take before we leave it is not possible to teach you other assignments or ethical issues or quality management issues in 2 hours see it requires 6 to 8 hours or maybe 10 hours to cover all the technical articles all the past paper questions so it's not that easy but still i try to make you realize with this session that if you prepare a technical article on ethics couple of technical articles on quality management followed by four technical articles on other assignments 1 2 and 4 that makes seven technical articles and then if you prepare three files one file is on ethics one file is on quality and one file is on other assignments one other another file is on procedure as well four files you will start you your 30 to 40 marks are in your pocket it's very much doable so today invest time on b c and f your target is b c and f thank you very much guys stay blessed stay creative same link will be used today i got late tomorrow i'll be on time thank you very much bye bye thank you then thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you take care bye bye and before you attend tomorrow session I think you need to prepare two questions, or you need to type two questions: Jensen, Jensen, and Moritz. If you are going to prepare these two questions, you are automatically absolutely well prepared for the most likely topic, which is prospective financial information. Let me tell you, prospective financial information (PFI) is the most likely topic for December twenty twenty three. Among or out of the other assignments, 